In this video today, the comic book collecting and speculating continues. We'll be going over your picks for comic books that you can add to your collection that you can never go wrong with. Coming at ya! Hello to all of my comic book speculators, Dante D here, and welcome to the channel where we talk about comic books and other geek stuff. Before we get into our video today, just wanted to make a few announcements. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, please do so. And I'm not just randomly asking you to subscribe. I'm asking you to subscribe so you have the chance to win one of many fabulous comic book prizes. I've been talking about the 10K subscriber giveaway for quite a while now. If you don't know about the 10K subscriber giveaway, basically what's happening is once the channel reaches 10,000 subscribers, I'll be doing a raffle which includes many different comic book prizes. If you wanna see what is going to be raffled off, please check out the link in the description where uh, I did a video that I posted not too long ago that shows off some of the prizes that you could possibly win. Also, a few people have reached out to me and have asked me how they could support this channel. The best way you could do that, obviously, is by liking and subscribing every video that's posted on the channel. But also, if you want to do something a little more, check out our new merch store. The merch store has been overhauled. I had a little bit of a merch store before, but I think I only had like two items on it or something. It wasn't really much of a merch store. I'm telling you, this new merch store, if I do say so myself, don't want to sound too biased, but it's pretty kick ass check it out uh you can get these types of shirts here uh that have the channel logo one of many different channel logos actually uh but then there are also shirts that don't have the channel logo on it at all and they're just these really awesome geeky tees that make references to all of our favorite franchises in geek media link is in the description check it out the shirts are priced to sell so they are at the lowest price possible especially in comparison to a lot of other youtube channels Check them out, you won't be disappointed. So last week we posted a video where we went over some comic books that I really feel are safe investments for your comic book collection. And I have to say, the response was great. Thank you to all of you who watched the video, commented, and liked it. Uh, I was really, really pleased to see so many viewers engaging in conversations and so many people reached out to me and provided me with their picks for comic books that they really feel are safe investments for their collection. And by safe investments, I mean books that aren't too stupid expensive right now. And by not too stupid expensive, I mean under a thousand dollars. And that these are books that are going to continue to increase in value over the years. So because the response was so awesome, I decided to post another installment on this topic. And all of the books that you're going to be seeing in this video today are your picks. So thank you to everybody who commented with their picks in the last video. Uh, I really, really appreciate it. And if this continues to do well, I have to say I might have to do a, uh, a maxi series uh, on this type of topic and uh, continue posting videos of this nature. Unfortunately, all the books that you're going to be seeing on this list today, I do not have. Uh, I might have one of them, but I didn't even bother to fish it out. You know, I didn't think it was worth it for, for one measly comic book. Um, and I still haven't put the books away from last week's video. So. so appearing in no particular order, here we go with our first book submitted by David Brock. Please, if I've butchered your name, I really apologize. David's pick for a book that is really a safe investment for any collection was Star Wars number one. Totally agree with this book. Uh, actually, to tell you the truth, I think I had this on the list for the the first original video that I posted on this topic, uh, but it never made it in there for some reason. I think maybe I just forgot uh, to film a clip about it, but yeah, I, I totally agree with this book. This book has been steadily increasing in price, and we, we cannot undermine the importance of Star Wars and the Star Wars franchise in pop culture. Star Wars is one of those franchises that has been so present in the cultural zeitgeist probably since it, its initial release in 1977. Star Wars isn't going anywhere. Heck, a testament to Star Wars' popularity is 
when Marvel re-released Star Wars number one, I think it was back in 2015, the sales were like off the chart. I think it was the best selling comic book um, that Marvel had ever put out or best selling comic book period since the 1990s. It sold, I believe over a million copies. So Star Wars number one, Bronze Age book, lovely art, awesome franchise. David, shout out to you for this pick. It's definitely a great one. The next two books on the list were submitted by actually a veteran on the channel who is very, very active in the comments section with every video that's posted, and that is Lovell Lucas Jr. His two picks were first, Detective Comics number 400. This is the first appearance of Man Bat, and Man Bat is actually one of those characters that I feel is really, really underrated. I really enjoyed Man Bat's appearance in uh, in Batman Arkham Knight, the video game. I just thought what they did with the character in that game, especially for such a minor role, he really, really left lasting impression, which I thought was awesome. Uh, this is a book that is steadily increasing in value, uh, but isn't really unattainable for your average collector. So definitely get this book uh, while you can. And the next uh, book that was uh, submitted by Lovell Lucas Jr. was Amazing Spider-Man number 361. I actually have this book. And the reason why I didn't include it in the first video is because I didn't think that this book was worth very much because when I bought this book 10 years ago, so we're talking like probably in like 2011, 2012, something like that, I paid 10 bucks for it. I paid, paid $10 for a first print of Amazing Spider-Man 361. When I looked at the prices now, I was like, whoa, they have like quadrupled in price. They're like really, even more than quadrupled. Like <laughs> the prices with this book have gone out of control. I think that might have something to do with the fact that Carnage will be making a movie appearance in the next Venom movie whenever that uh, gets released with, I believe it's Woody Harrelson who will be playing Carnage. There's gonna be Carnage. Michael Katz is the next viewer who made some submissions for books that he felt were really safe investments. And uh, one of the books was X-Men number 100. And this definitely is a key issue. This is uh, the old team versus the new team. This is a solid Uncanny X-Men issue to have in your collection. This is early Chris Claremont work. If you don't know Chris Claremont, legendary writer on Uncanny X-Men, I think probably the longest writer on a series ever. Correct me if I'm wrong on that, but he he, he worked on Uncanny X-Men for a really, really long time. Uh, the next book is another Uncanny X-Men book. That is Uncanny X-Men number 101. This is the first appearance of the Phoenix. This is one of those books that I was actually uh, stalking for a bit on eBay, uh, maybe two, three years ago. Uh, I never ended up actually buying it just because it was a little bit more, it was, it was priced at a little bit more than I actually wanted to pay for it. So I actually ended up leaving it alone, but uh, it's definitely still attainable for your average collector. Pick it up because it definitely is a solid investment. The Phoenix storyline is probably the most significant and most memorable Uncanny X-Men storyline in, in, in the history of the Uncanny X-Men. Actually, before Chris Claremont even came on the Uncanny X-Men, uh, that series was, was a dying series. It wasn't going anywhere. The X-Men didn't even become popular until Chris Claremont took over. So uh, cannot, I cannot stress the importance of these early uh, Chris Claremont issues. The next book is another one of Michael Katz's picks. That is Uncanny X-Men number 130, and this is the first appearance of Dazzler. Uh, I, I also agree with this one for sure. Uh, Dazzler is one of those characters that you never know what Marvel can be planning in their uh, MCU uh, for the character in, in upcoming years. I know in the second wave of MCU, we're, we're going to be seeing kind of a lot of offbeat characters that are going to be making some appearances. You never know, Dazzler might be making an appearance, if not, heck, I don't know, I don't follow all the announcements, but an announcement might have already been made that Dazzler is appearing. I don't know, let me know in the comments if you know a little bit more about that or not. But uh, definitely a, a solid book. Uh, pick it up. Dazzler became popular enough where in uh, in the 80s they gave her her own 
uh, series for a bit. I don't think the series did too, too great, but still, she was significant enough that she got her own series. And the last book submitted by Michael Katz was Conan the Barbarian number three. This is a book, actually, I didn't even know about. Apparently, this book is a, a solid investment just because it has a limited print run, I believe it was. So, uh, Michael Katz, shout out to you. Thank you for submitting all those books. And, uh, I actually learned something new, especially with that Conan uh, number three uh, pick of yours. So thank you. Next up are submissions by James Howard. And uh, that was Superboy number 68, the one and only Superboy number 68 and Justice League of America number one. Now, Justice League of America number one, uh, I was a little hesitant to include this on the list just because I think it might be a little bit too expensive. If you're finding a deal on this, you're getting a really, really good deal. Uh, I don't know if this is a book that uh, many of us can afford, uh, but I decided to include it on the list anyway, just for, for how significant it is. But I feel by including this book, I, start, I have to start dabbling in a lot of those uh, much coveted uh, Marvel Silver Age issues, uh, which I don't want to go there just because those books are just really, really stupid expensive. Like some of them cost as much as a, as a sports car or a house, really. Nevertheless, James Howard, shout out to you. Thank you for submitting your picks. The next picks were submitted by both Darren Morin and uh, a person just simply named Jordan. Uh, they, they actually had a lot of uh, the sim similar books, so I decided to group these two viewers uh, together. Their picks included Fantastic Four number 48 and number 49. Again, totally agree with uh, these picks here. These include the first appearances of Silver Surfer and Galactus, as well as the first time that Galactus and Silver Surfer appear on a cover. These are super significant Fantastic Four issues and definitely, definitely worth the pickup. Again, uh, in that earlier video, I was kind of trying to steer clear of the Silver Age just because, you know, once you're getting into the Silver Age, you're kind of going into the Wild West. Darren and Jordan, shout out to you both for those picks. Thanks for providing them. The next book was actually submitted only by Darren Morin, and that is The Incredible Hulk number 180. Another one of those books which I definitely feel is a, a safe investment. Can't believe really I didn't include this in the first video. And this is the first cameo appearance of Wolverine. Uh, and on that note, uh, I should have also included in the last video Incredible Hulk number 182, which is technically the second appearance of Wolverine. I actually have Incredible Hulk number 182. I got a great deal on it uh, a few years back. And... Uh, Wolverine just has a very brief, brief appearance in there, but it's still technically considered his second appearance, so definitely worth to have in the collection. Following those are two books that were submitted by Wesley Stewart, and I can't believe I s forgot these books in the first video. Uh, Wesley suggested that Batman Adventures number 12 be on the list, and again, 100%, 100%, I'm in total agreement with that. If you don't know Batman Adventures number 12, this is the first appearance of Harley Quinn. He also suggested that Batman Adventures Mad Love, which discusses the origin of Harley Quinn, uh, be included in the list as well. And that is another solid, solid pick. Harley Quinn is one of those characters that has just become so super popular. I'm not a huge Harley Quinn fan, but I know some people just go nuts over Harley Quinn. And these books just continue to rise in price. It's unbelievable how expensive uh, these books are getting, especially for books that came out in the uh, 1990s, which as you know, uh, is pretty hit or miss when it comes to uh, value of comic books. G.I. Joe number 21, which is the first Storm Shadow appearance, and it's also the famous silent issue in uh, G.I. Joe. James also picked another book, and that was DC Comics Presents number 26, and this is the first appearance of the new Teen Titans. I looked this book up, and even I was dumbfounded and baffled by what this book is going for. Uh, and it's not what you think. Uh, I, I totally thought this book was going to be stupid, stupid expensive just based on like the 
the the Netflix uh, Titan series, which is awesome. I absolutely love it. Uh, you know, Teen Titans Go. Like the Teen Titans are really, really front and center in the film and TV world uh, right now. I wouldn't be surprised to see a, a, a movie uh, in, in the future. Uh, but this book is not that expensive. It was like under 200 bucks, maybe like $100. Uh, I, I could believe it. So uh, if you want this book and you're a new Teen Titans fan, pick it up now because uh, who knows what's going to happen uh, with the price of this book in the future. Uh, again, this is probably the cheapest book on the list. So uh, if there's any book that you're going to pick up from this list today, it probably should be this one. So that about does it for our video today. Really, really hope that you enjoyed it and enjoyed seeing your picks for the books you could never go wrong with in adding to your comic book collection. Are there any other books that you feel are really, really safe investments when it comes to... Uh, comic books to add to your collection. Let me know in the comments. I am happy to continue doing videos like this if you are really enjoying them. And uh, I definitely will continue uh, to add to this list and add to this series uh, in addition to posting other videos about topics in geek culture. Until next time, this is Dante D signing off. I will see you all in the next episode.